So I want to figure out where my flowers are, where where the chair is going to be in the picture. And the best way to do this is try to envision um, the entire thing before I start painting so I can kind of see where I want things. One thing I do know that I want is I want the whole chair in the picture. Um, I've already decided that. So I want to get the legs to come down to here. But I want to make sure that I can still get the flowers into the top of the picture. So the top of the flowers are right here. I want to contain this whole um, the chair and the flowers and everything in my canvas this time. So this is a decision I've made. Um, you know, so I want to be thinking about where everything needs to be to get that done. Um, so if these are the bottom of the legs here, and this is the top of my flower, that means I have to fit everything in this area right here. So, you know, I, I don't want to have start at one end and run out of room. So I want to be thinking, and one way I can do this is I can divide the whole from the top of the the flowers to the bottom of the the chair I can kind of draw a line right in the middle of that with my brush so I just hold my brush up there and see where that is and it's about um, about where the vase meets the flowers maybe slightly lower so that's gonna be right in here so I want to go ahead and kind of draw that vase in right in here kind of get an idea of where it needs to be so that everything relates Right, right in there. Now I have to be careful, I almost came down too far. Might wipe that back out. This is really important to get this right because if we don't get this right, then our whole, all of our drawing and everything will be off. So I really want the bottom of the vase to be about right here. So just a little, bring that up just a little bit. Make this vase nice and small. If we get the vase too big, we're not gonna be able to fit everything in. So then here's my chair right here comes out like this and here's the legs to the chair they come down here we've got a line that comes across here there's the back legs and there's a line that comes across them this comes up here so by kind of sketching in this chair uh, and the vase first, I can kind of see where everything is in relationship to the, the outline of the canvas. Then I can go ahead and put my big shape of my flowers in. Now watch, this is what I want to do. Just a big outline here of where the flower shape is. I don't want to get detailed and try to draw every flower right now. I'm just kind of drawing a contour around where all these flowers are. And we've got a few that come up right here, just a little bit. So this gives us an idea of where everything is sitting in the canvas. Now notice the flowers are and the vase and everything is just slightly off to the left. This is going to just add a little bit more interest to our canvas instead of putting it dead center in the painting. Um, and we can balance this all out by having some other things going on in the background. Uh, it kind of balance the weight out but I, I purposely moved it over to the left just a little bit. So that's something we want to be aware of. Our mind says, oh, put it right in the center, but that's going to create for a static composition. Um, and we want this to be, um, have a little bit more interest to it than if we just set it right in the center. So that's sort of the extent of the drawing that I'm going to do at this point. Now, I'm still waiting on the sun. Uh, it's right behind the, uh, the cloud right now. We've got a big cloud that's going over. So, um, one thing that I can do while I'm waiting on the sun is I can start working on the background because we've got these dark greens in the background and one thing I want is I want the sunlit parts of the flowers uh, and the chair to be illuminated against this big dark area in the background the shadow of these bushes back there so it's not gonna hurt me to go ahead and put in some shadowed areas back there now to do that we're gonna take our uh, yellow ochre and ultramarine blue and just a touch of that phthalo blue and make a nice deep dark cool green color and we're mixing with the palette knife here and we're gonna get a bunch of this on the on the palette knife now the cool thing about the palette knife is it doesn't allow you to focus too much on detail um, you just put big areas of color down uh, and it creates a nice um, dynamic effect especially when contrasted with 
um, some some more delicate brush strokes and more delicate marks with the made with the palette knife later on in the in the painting. So we can put this on and kind of scrape it back off a little bit and put it on in different areas. And that's going to create some variation in tone um, back here. Now there are some real dark areas back here, right where the ground is um, along the bottom of this bank. I want to go ahead and hit them in there too. So this is that crimson mixed with some phthalo blue and some ultramarine blue to get a nice dark sort of a reddish purple. And so this is going to allow us to, to go ahead and kind of get this background popped in pretty quickly and then we can really spend some time on, on the actual flowers. Sienna uh, with just a little bit of ultramarine blue is going to give us this nice shadowed area here of the, the chair. And just as, as least the least number of brush strokes the better. You know, if you can get this stuff in, in one or two brush strokes, then you know no reason to fool around and uh, get too detailed. I love the expressiveness of simple brush strokes. So we're just we're just playing with this concept here of just big bold areas of paint. Now these what these the shadowed side of this chair is catching a lot of reflected light. So here's how we can do this. We're gonna put some yellow ochre on our brush and a little bit of this um, vermilion and we're gonna come back so kind of a lighter orange and we're gonna come back and hit that into the shadows to create that nice feeling of glowing reflected light. We want to make sure that it's not as light as our sunlit areas but just a little bit of um, just a little bit lighter than our actual shadow value is going to give us that nice glowing feeling. Again, I can take these brush strokes right across. Um, we're going to mix up some dark green again. And I want to come in and start cutting in again to these flowers. So, so we're going to be bringing that background tone in uh, a little bit more to some of these areas where. Uh, this background comes down into some of these flowers and it's going to start creating some some detail here around the flower areas I'm using the knife again because it's it's making me it's forcing me to put big broad swatches of color down and so again we can start to leave the subject matter a little bit and just start looking at the painting back up from it and see what you feel like it needs you know do you, do you need some weight on one side or you need a light color on the other and and this might be a little abstract of a concept at first when you first start painting but the more you paint the more you'll start to feel those, you know, the more you'll start to feel those relationships and where you need different uh, types of, of strokes and different types of color. So just hang in there. I always say that. Keep painting. And you know, especially when you're trying something new. I mean, I've been painting with these palette knives for about two weeks now, and uh, at first I felt like I was just kind of almost blinded by them because I really didn't know how they worked and I'd never painted with a palette knife um, and I'm so accustomed to painting with a paintbrush that it took me a little while to, to get the hang of it and now I'm starting to feel a little bit more comfortable with them but uh, I've already painted about six or seven paintings with them and uh, you know I'm starting to, starting to feel a little bit more uh, like they're becoming an extension of my hand. So that's what you want. I'm so comfortable painting with brushes. Of course, I've painted for 20 years with paint brushes. Um, but I wanted to try something different. I wanted to, to, to experiment a little bit. Um, you know, I wanted to play around with things. And so I, uh, I started pushing this paint around with these paint brushes and I thought, man, this is really cool. Um, and I just, I just kept working at it, and now I'm starting to feel like, starting to get the hang of it. Don't want anything too dark or too real, too light in the vase. So it also, it, so it neutralizes some of the colors, but it also um, new, it brings together the values so that the values aren't as close together. I'm not really getting the type of stroke I want with that. Um, so I'm going to go in with a paintbrush and get it in there.
Just some little bits and some little suggestions of some stems that come down in there. And just to add a little variety and variation to that. While I've got this brush, I'll go ahead and finish getting the little bits of these areas of the canvas here. And just there's some little warm touches down here I can get. Um, Now there's some little tiny glints of light out here in the background and I, if I do this right I can do them without making them too distracting. Just some little tiny touches and that's what this knife is for. Uh, we can get little tiny touches like that. So the light pink where it's hitting little branches and we want, we want the canvas to kind of sparkle. Uh, so you can think of it like a little, little bits of sunlight coming through and then even where this uh, yellow is in the foreground, if we make a nice creamy light yellow, we can add these little light touches in there, kind of in the middle, uh, and create even more of a sense of a glowing sunlight uh, in the middle of the area. So what I mean is I'll take this, take this right here and go right in the middle of that. It's just a little bit of a lighter yellow. A little right in the middle there. Creates a nice sense of glowing sunlight. Some little bits of yellow up in here. Kind of pull your eye around. It's up to you at this point how far you want to go. Um, there's no rules to this. I mean, there are some some guidelines you want to try to follow when you're when you're first learning to.